How's it going? So I, I thought I'd do a video on just talking about the roller coaster of emotions. I tend to use that term quite often with people. We've been conditioned really to think that obviously we don't want the lows. So the lows were all, everyone listening to this, all three people <laughs> would voluntarily say, yes, you know, I'll surrender my lows. I'm happy to, to get rid of them. But often we're having lows because we have highs but we equate the high with being happy or that's a good day we don't realize that it's a high if that makes sense so if you look at the buddhist monk you know or the zen monk or the supposedly enlightened person or peaceful person that they're they don't really get extremely excited and they also don't get depressed or low they're kind of just joyful. They're kind of just at peace. Now, I remember speaking to a woman. It was a woman who, who kind of pushed me to start the course that I then developed for women. So I developed it for her to help, to help teach her what I do. And then that became, you know, a template that I could help other people with. So I remember talking to her and she's very, let's say, excitable. <laughs> Hello, Lana, if you're listening. So she um, she could get very excited and very happy and just really exciting and have a great day. And because I see that high excitement as having an equal and opposite low. And she would have these highs and the lows. And we don't want the highs and the lows. But they go hand in hand. That's the roller coaster. So it's about recognizing, well, like we can obviously recognize when a low is a low. We don't want that. But in fairness, then we can also have a low that's, so sometimes we can have a low that's just fucking devastating and exhausting and draining and really rattles us. And then over the years, maybe we work through that and our lows are not as low. That's progress. That's brilliant. And we kind of think, wow, you know, this is manageable. This is okay. So some people might look at those lows and go, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> so I'm kind of like that with people's highs as well. And I deem that the roller coaster. So, you know, as people can be really enjoying, I had a great day today, it was so exciting. I really, oh, it was amazing, this happened. Like, I never, I don't really say that, you know. Or if I do, they're kind of just words with a little bit of excitement. It's like, yeah, it was a really great day. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> That's me. Like, you won't often hear me kind of getting excited and all kind of like, wow, that was amazing. It's just not me. And part of the reason it's just not me is I, I don't want the equal and opposite low. And I recognize that that high is indeed a high. It's, it's chemicals. Shakespeare described falling in love as a disease and it really is chemicals. You know, when you meet that person, you get so excited and you're kind of, you feel it in your chest and in your heart. It's chemicals. It wears off. It passes. I don't want chemicals. It's as simple as that. I'm an addict and an alcoholic and I'm sober. I don't know what it is now, 18 or 19 or 20 years or something like that, but I don't want I don't want to be artificially happy or high or low or any of that. I don't want it. I want peace. I want joy, which is a more grounded and it's a longer lasting and it's a less destructible. Highs come and go and whoa and lows and it's like you know, for some people they go through all that range in a day or in in hours or minutes. Jesus Christ, like it's exhausting. Or it might be a lower. They might be high for a few days and then low for a few days. Uh, I don't want that either. I remember talking to this woman about that, you know, saying that she was excitable and that there were highs and lows. She still wanted the highs. You know, as many of you may be listening, many of the three listeners might be thinking, yeah, like, I want to be excited. And I want to have fun and get your experience with it. All I would suggest is observation and through and through microdosing psilocybin a couple of years ago I will do a video on that I could 
you know, really helped me with regular meditation to to see that roller coaster, to see the chemicals, the high and the low of everyday life and not really want to be a part of it, to, to observe it. It's not joy, it's not peace, it's not happiness. But I personally don't, I'm not, I don't even like the word happiness. I'm not really a big fan of it, you know. I grew out of that years ago, you know, are you happy? It's like, I don't even know what happy is. I'm more at peace and I'm more joyful than I've probably ever been. Happy, happy I think is a momentary thing. You know, that something happens and it's like, wow, and you just feel happiness. It's great, it's fleeting. But we have become a world that like everyone is trying to attach, we're trying to fucking bottle happiness inject it and get as much of it and and trying to get to a place where we are always happy i don't but i don't think that exists i don't really believe in that i don't really have any interest in that peace joy that's what i seek or what i'm moving towards so i got to see just that all of this is transient and we can get on the train. We can get on the roller coaster if we want. So if your boss says something or does something or your partner does something, you can get on that roller coaster. And you can get angry, get into it, get thrown around, get exhausted, get worn out. And maybe then have makeup sex. Preferably with your partner <laughs> rather than your boss. But <laughs> If that's the way it goes, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> so, and that makeup sex is part of the roller coaster as well. It's that high of fucking chemicals, that rush. So soon after the makeup sex might come another low. We can be reactive. Things happen, we react. Someone sends you a text, you, re you respond immediately, we react. And meditation or stillness and being present and observing our emotions and our core solar plexus heart stomach it allows us time so it might just be seconds it allows a pause to to think who to feel what's going on here and in that pause we can decide i'm not going to engage in this or i'm going to clear whatever pain or anguish or response emotional responses in me first and then I may feel moved to respond. So in that moment, we have an opportunity to clear the emotions and thus not get on the roller coaster and not react. This takes work and it takes progress, but it's very empowering it just to, to realize in those moments that we don't have to react, that we can clear the emotions and we're not in an argument or stuck in something or he said, she said, or trying to change someone or any of that kind of shite that we can just be free, be present. Ramta, who I've referred to the odd time, I was a student in, in the Ramta school maybe 10 years ago for a few years, but Ramta talks about the... There's a documentary called What the Bleep Do We Know? And it's a pretty crappy documentary, but it's very insightful and very informative, informative and I would recommend watching it. Uh, it's not ex exactly entertaining or high budget, but... It's kind of like a, one of those documentaries you'd watch in school, but but it's informative and it's worth it. And it, this documentary changed my life. I'm not joking. I've had a few moments that have really changed me and this documentary changed me. What the bleep do we know? So it was made by the Ramta School of Enlightenment or funded by them. And it basically talks about the addiction of chemicals within our body so we get angry, we get horny, we get hungry, and this bag of bones, this meat sack, is addicted to things. Wants another cigarette, wants another slice of cake, wants another cup of coffee, wants to have sex, wants to watch television, wants to go to sleep, wants to go to the gym because it wants adrenaline, wants this, wants that, wants, it just wants something else, wants anger, it wants outrage, gets onto Twitter, <laughs> argues with people. <laughs> I wonder who that was. You know, watches the news, argues with people, anger. It's just, it's it's our, our being, our body, our physical body is pumping out. It's just responding. Now, Ramta would say that all these chemicals are, are there for a purpose, but they were originally there to teach us something in extreme conditions, like fear. You know, you're about to get eaten by the dinosaur, you feel afraid, you run away. 
you learn from it it's purposeful or the adrenaline for reaction or our response time we in our modern world have just become it's like food we've just become addicted to these chemicals so we pump these things through ourselves all day long we fill ourselves up with coffee and sugar and cigarettes and sex and whatever alcohol and all these things as well as the emotions that we're addicted to we're addicted to outrage anger um sadness depression rejection confusion remorse they're all chemicals that are pumped through us so we can identify them and the body being a be we become like look of victim culture it, people addicted to being a victim addicted to those poor me's and oh my god and the chemicals and then other people around them feeding that beast feeding that machine now ramta says that because we're addicted and because we keep demanding these chemicals from our body we're burning out the human body and he would say that that's why we die was a big part of why we die so these chemicals that are supposed to be pumped through us randomly rarely throughout our lifetime we're shooting them through our body all day long every day and we basically burn out the receptors and the neuro nets the receptor cells that just that charge of energy that comes through boom more adrenaline more anger more whatever <laughs> And eventually, like, the system just is fucking fried, you know. We just need rest. We're exhausted. So we start to develop grey hair and the skin sags and parts of the body just stop working because they've just been fucking working overtime dealing with all this stuff for a lifetime. As you know, because you're hopefully a regular listener and reader, this is my a big part of my work is to disconnect from that and to observe and allow that emotion or anger or whatever it is to flow through observe it we don't have to connect with it so we'll feel the feeling we'll witness it and we'll integrate and welcome and embrace and love the feeling exactly the opposite of what society tells us and our parents and how we were raised you know which is like think positive imagine a lovely day that you're on a beach <laughs> you know all that stuff so we integrate it we make peace with it and it neutralizes it so it won't happen again and gradually we keep doing that it settles so we have less of the high and less of the low and that's duality duality is the highs and the lows the roller coaster goes really up and it goes really down i'm not suggesting i know that some people won't you know be thinking well i want to kind of i want to be excited i want to really enjoy life and live life that's cool my only suggestion is just observe so when the when you have these moments or days just mark it up in your mind and just think okay let's see how this goes and maybe a day later or a few hours later or whatever there'll be an equal opposite dip a low if it's excitement if it's kind of chemically induced now you might think well it's worth it i don't mind having 20 lows a week because i have 20 highs a week that's cool keep doing it until maybe someday you might get to a point where you think okay i'm fucking burnt out with this i'm exhausted it's too fleeting it's too erratic i'm i'm on that roller coaster it goes up and i just go up with it and then it comes down and crashes and i go down with it i don't want to be at the mercy of any of that i i just like to be at peace most of the time more and more that's what i work towards granted i do have my rattled moments of course but there's less highs and there's less lows so that's the roller coaster and it's worth just considering those really good days or exciting days to consider hmm is that am i on a roller coaster now is this just chemicals is this a high and is it worth it you know you might find that you are actually addicted like this idea of follow your bliss and generate like get get really excited and get really up there is something in that but that's another day's work that's another video anyway thanks for listening i'll put some links below for my newsletter my instagram page <laughs> and uh if there's anything else of relevance thanks for listening